Hey friends, welcome to Generation Tech. So, how fast do Star Wars ships traveling in hyperspace go? To make 0.5 past light speed. But what does that even mean? Today, we are going to find out. But first, we gotta look at how hyperdrive works in the Star Wars universe. It is not as easy as saying, Help warp one, engage! And going from point A to point B. That's not the case with hyperdrive. The system required a ship first to accelerate to a high speed somewhere close to the speed of light and then engage a hyperdrive generator which would make the ship jump beyond the light speed barrier into an alternate dimension called hyperspace whilst preserving the ship's mass and form. Travelling through hyperspace required complex route planning as Han informed Luke of as they escaped from Tatooine. Travelling through hyperspace in like dust and crops, boy. About precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star or bounce too close to a supernova and then it injured trip real quick, wouldn't it? Even though the ships travelled in another dimension, objects in physical space would cast mass shadows into the hyperspace dimension which could rip ships apart. Thus precise calculations were required. To get from point A to point B, you'd sometimes have to take the long way around to avoid certain obstacles. That's why ships had navy computers and smaller craft such as X-Wings had astromech droids that could plot hyperspace routes. Over the years, safe hyperspace routes were mapped and these became known as hyperspace lanes. These lanes often became busy trade routes between planets. The inspiration for the technology came from a species of space whale called Pergil. These whales have the natural ability to enter the hyperspace dimension and could thus cross the galaxy at great speeds. They would sometimes swim around in hyperspace lanes in swarms, crashing into starships. Kind of like Captain Sully's experience. Birds. Whoa. In fact, that's the topic of Disney's new movie, Pergil, Miracle in Hyperspace, starring Tom Hanks. J.J. Abrams didn't want to direct that one for some reason. Anyway, back to discussing hyperdrive. After studying the Pergils, humans first developed sleeper ships at slower speeds and then developed hyperspace cannons to shoot ships into hyperspace. Good old humans, just love shooting stuff out of guns. <laughs> And then they finally developed hyperdrives. So how fast do ships like the Millennium Falcon go? Well, we don't know the speed because they were traveling in an alternate dimension where the concepts of space-time were different. But in the physical dimension, they appeared to move at an immense speed. There are estimates of the speed of the Millennium Falcon traveling from Tatooine to Alderaan in A New Hope on the internet. Because yes, there are people online who have enough time on their hands to work out complicated mathematical formulas to let us know the speed of a ship that George Lucas himself probably didn't even make up a speed for. Anyway, it is unclear how long Luke, Obi-Wan, Han, Chewie and co were travelling for, but it probably wasn't more than a day since we don't see any evidence of them sleeping. So if it was one day, that means the Falcon was going at a speed of 50,000 light years per day. At that rate, you could cross the galaxy in two or three days. In reality, crossing the galaxy in a couple of days may not be possible, because like we mentioned earlier, you relied on hyperspace lanes, which were the safe routes around mass shadows cast by physical objects. But it's safe to say that crossing from one side of the galaxy to the other was perfectly doable in a week, perhaps. Now, since the Star Wars galaxy is about the same size as our Milky Way galaxy, a little over 100,000 light years across, you can see this is way faster than 75 years Voyager was supposed to take to get back from the Delta Quadrant in Star Trek, making hyperdrive much faster than the regular warp drive that Star Trek ships use. So going back to the Millennium Falcon's 0.5 past light speed, this was the ship's hyperdrive rating, class 0.5. It originally had a class 1 hyperdrive unit, but this was replaced with a class 0.5, which made it twice as fast as many of the ships in the Imperial Navy. So guys, this all came from some of the research I've been doing for our upcoming Enterprise vs. Star Destroyer video. I also came across a video that's really worth a watch, it's called Star Wars vs. Star Trek The Empire Invades the Federation. I'll put a link to it on screen and in the description. Go there, check it out. If you like it, leave them a comment. Let them know Generation Tech sent you there. As always, if you're new, please subscribe to our channel. Give this video a like. And if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech. <laughs>